We can expect an unimaginable time of trouble in the last days, such as the world has never seen before. That's what Scripture tells us. But we need not be afraid. His word shaping our story. The year was August 1948, and a young preacher, George Vandeman, was preparing to take the pulpit. As he did so, a Sabbath hush fell over the new grounds as members mixed gratitude with happy hearts for the work accomplished and for their new auditorium. That was 70 years ago, and Central California Conference continues the legacy of Soquel Camp Meeting today. Soquel, an embodiment of America's camp meeting, has become a timeless tradition of faith intersecting with culture, pleasure bursting with praise, and truth uniting with tradition. It is camp meeting time once again. We invite you to join us as we worship our Creator together and let our stories and the stories that are yet to come be shaped yet again. Born and raised in East Los Angeles, Pastor Jose Vicente Rojas serves as president of Movementum, a ministry that exists to improve the corporate cultures of churches, administrative entities, and community organizations through the development of servant leaders. Movementum reaches across cultural, ethnic, and linguistic lines to inspire and train a new generation of servant leaders, resulting in more effective evangelism, youth ministry, and church administration. A musician and recording artist, Jose has authored several books and is best known around the world as a passionate speaker and preacher of the Word. He holds a bachelor's degree in religion and a master's degree in religion with emphasis in sociology from Loma Linda University. He is still madly in love with Ruthie, his wife of over 37 years, and their four grown children, Veronica, Angelica, Gabriel, and Maria. Please welcome Jose Rojas. There, there's something about coming home and being among family. In the East, I'm asked about my mustache pretty much every day. <laughs> Out here, everybody's got somebody in the family who looks like me. <laughs> yeah, it's too long, but get over it. You know, that's, I'm at home. Privileged to pastor Bakerfield, Lamont, Hamford, Goshen, Visalia, uh, Fresno, Madeira. You've had to deal with me in all kinds of issues. I lived here in Campbell, canvassed San Francisco, Mission District back when it was Hispanic. I'm glad you didn't catch that. <laughs> in the Mission District before all those geeks started moving in from, from uh, the uh, Silicon Valley and tripling the value of houses. It's an honor to be home. I studied at Monterey Bay Academy. Came here in 1975. Alan White was the featured speaker that year. <laughs> <laughs> Been coming to SoCal for the same chicken nuggets with tartar sauce. <laughs> and uh, I bought this Bible here with all those incredible deals at the ABC for $11. A column in English, a column in Spanish, the two major languages I preach. I'm adding French to that. I figure that's another major language out there, so... Don't make me practice right now and shame myself publicly. But we're coming along. This Bible's been around the world now six times, all six continents. It has seen almost 60,000 baptisms. This Bible, whenever I baptize gang members, I have them graffiti my Bible. It is scribbled all over. Of course, a grandma got in there and said, I want your prayers, Pastor. I'm not a gang member, but I support your work among those kids. Got Juarez Cartel here in the prison in Juarez, baptizing in 55-gallon drums. It's very hard when the candidate is tall. We'd reach the best we could. 
It was not a christening, it was a baptism. And praise God, the graffiti goes around the world, Toronto, Sydney, uh, Johannesburg, Pretoria, uh, Moscow, Guam, a tiny little Guam, east side Guam, man. <laughs> we got palm trees, man. Okay, so uh, Skew in Washington, D.C. gave his life to Christ, got into a, a rehab center, detoxed. <laughs> and he walks with Jesus today. This Bible has been stolen three times. That's a sick souvenir. You know, I get off stage to greet folks, and, and my Bible walks away. Two times it came by mail quickly. <laughs> they must have gotten to that one part that says, Thou, thou shalt not steal. Hmm. <laughs> this last round, it was gone for over three years. The, the covers were falling off, and I would just tape it, you know, with any tape I could find. I had white tape on this thing, and I'd preach on 3ABN and Hope TV and folks would send me these brand new state-of-the-art Bibles with the 24-karat gold edging, and they would say, you, draw, you get rid of that piece of junk Bible you have. You know, this is my sword. In Latino terms, this is my machete. <laughs> I've sharpened it many times. And when you know your way around a weapon, no other weapon will do. Keep sharpening it. I went and spent over $300 to have it rebound. It has hinges. It just <laughs> drops right open to wherever I need to go. And every time I see the graffiti of a young person who walks in the arms of Christ, that's why we do what we do, ladies and gentlemen. We, we work for Jesus. Amen. Money would be nice. <laughs> but I understand that, that the streets of heaven are paved with transparent money. And I must ask myself just how much money do I need? How much pavement do I need to truly be happy in life? If we're going to walk on the stuff in heaven, we just need what we need to get by, to fund ministry that others may prepare to walk on money when we get to heaven. It is an honor to come home. The weather's perfect. None of this 108 in the shade in Bakersfield. <laughs> None of this 109 with humidity in Fresno this week. No, sir. We got SoCal. Any questions? There will be veggie chicken with uh, tartar sauce after the program for those who have a burden. It is good to be home. So take out your sword. We're going to battle. Open with me to the book of Mark, chapter 6. There was a big party, and Herod had arrested John the Baptist because his wife didn't like him. John had dared to say to them as a couple, while Herod was overwhelmed by the message of John, he was being reached by the message of John. Mashiach was coming. Someone that he was not worthy to even lace the sandals. And Herod said, I gotta hear this. His daddy, when he heard something similar, ordered any child to and under to be killed. But his son was intrigued by the message of the Messiah. But John looked at them and said, Come on, man, you guys ain't married. That ain't your wife. That's your brother's wife. What's up with that? You know, he said it's similar. I mean, you know. <laughs> John was not from the residential district. John was from the neighborhood. And as you know, we talk different in the neighborhood. Don't worry, you'll get it later. It's kind of like Jesus. He was from Nazareth. Come on, can anything good come out of Belmont in uh, Fresno? <laughs> we talk different in the barrio. Say, watch, watch. They even call him immigration on us. Orale. It's true. You actually have a Latino speaking at camp meeting. You see, when it's all said and done, we're in it together. Amen. There's no difference between you and me, except maybe the mustache. 
I have a rich chocolate brown. Some of you have a rich creamy white. The Lord is beautiful. He has the most gorgeous blue, green, hazel, brown, black eyes you've ever seen. <laughs> and I love the Lord's hair. It's jet black, blonde, red, brown, curly, straight, wavy. And on his shoulders, it says in the book of Revelation, you see, we look like him. That's why we come to camp meeting, to fellowship with him. That's why, uh, you know, uh, somebody once asked, how can you tell a story when you announce a passage? Okay, since the, the book, The Leadership Secrets of Jose Vicente Rojas will never be published because I've begun to give away my secrets publicly. And since it's being televised, everybody's going to get the same stuff. So don't even try to publish it. I announce a passage and I tell a quick story to give you time to find the verse. Don't you hate it at church? Our, our passage today is in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. And you haven't even grabbed your Bible yet, and they start reading it. And then when you finally find the verse, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. <laughs> this is cabin. I want to make sure you're looking at the passage while we're reading it. Does that make sense? I'm just a broken human being. It's just a simple method. I want to give you time to find it. I wasted extra minutes on that, but I just want to make sure that when you announce a passage, give folks time to find it. Let them read with their own eyes what the Word of God has to say to them. Then he really will bless the reading of his Word. Herod arrested John because his wife was mad. Then you know how things get out of hand in the party, especially when liquor's been served and Herod, uh, since it wasn't his daughter, it was his live-in's daughter, his sister-in-law's daughter that he lived with, his niece. He, uh, he, was, he was drunk, and he tells her, sweetheart, dance, and we're up to half my kingdom, whatever you want. And then, of course, mom says, you go ahead and dance, and I'll tell you later. <laughs> and so, mom, you get out there. You're 13. You're a young woman now. She dances. Oh, ama, pero como te pones a mandarme? Baby, dile, go do it. Tell him, tell him. Okay, on a plate, okay, up to half my kingdom, sweetheart. On a silver platter, I want the head of John. And they were in shock. Herod was terrified. Not John. He was making sense out there. He had something to say, even to me. It's too late. You promised up to half your kingdom. And in a very painful passage, Herod hangs his head low and tells the verdugo, that's a Spanish term for executioner, verdugo. Can you say that? V with, v with verdugo. Now you know what it says in my second column. I know you're moved to tears, but that's Spanish. I'm in. <laughs> you know, when Moses approached a burning bush, it was like a torch. It was acacia from the desert. The same acacia in the Middle East that you have up here in the Mojave Desert, and, and down there in the Mojave Desert. And, and it was just burning and burning, but it would not consume. Moses approached the bush, and suddenly a powerful voice came out of the bush, Buenos dias. <laughs> I told him to take off his shoes because I'm glad it's been translated for other cultures to be blessed by. The verdugo went to the cell and cut off John's head. It was brought to Herod, a horrified Herod, who then gave it to the girl who then gave it to her happy mother. Remember, there are enemies of the gospel, and their only joy is to stop it in its tracks. Jesus had said, there is no one greater than John. The people were not ready for a Messiah, but God, John chapter 1, verse 6, there was a man sent from God, and his name was John. It didn't say sent by God. 
There's a difference between being sent by God and being sent from God. One is ambassador, another one received through the chain of command orders. Osama bin Laden met soldiers, Navy SEALs, that were sent by the White House. But they came from a staging area in another undisclosed location in the Middle East. But there are times when someone is sent from the White House, a direct emissary with a personal letter from the president to hand over to somebody. When you're sent by, it's not as powerful as when you're sent from. There was a man sent from God, and his name was John. He did not come to be the light. He came to testify of the light. And that's why the Messiah was accepted, because John preached in the wilderness, <laughs> repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Priests didn't get baptized because, well, we have nothing to repent of. We haven't sinned. And that happened in one of my churches here in Central. It was at prayer meeting where we spent an hour in prayer. Imagine that. You come to a prayer meeting and spend an hour praying. Anyway, that's just wanted to jog you a little bit. And praying, taking prayer requests and taking your sweet time and praying till 9.30 when everybody should be in bed. One man got up and announced, this is my anniversary. His own wife said, it, it's, it's sweetheart, it's not, I, not that one. It's just that today it's, it's my third year. Today it's been three years since I've sinned. He was so happy. A deacon said, sit down, brother, you just blew it. <laughs> I said, we'll pray together after the program, hermano. But <laughs> welcome to the land of sinners where all of us need saving. Who of us is good? Who of us can say, I am ready to be translated tomorrow morning? There is no one good. The apostle said, no, not one. So if you think you're good, just look in the mirror. I know you got one back at the trailer, the tent, somewhere where you're staying. We all need a Savior. Isn't that, isn't that a relief? I don't know about you, but I need me a Savior. I guess I could put that into proper syntax. I, too, need a Savior. Brothers and sisters, here's the part of the story that overwhelmed me that I want to share with you tonight. Verse 29 of chapter 6, verse uh, uh, Mark, Mark 6, 29 and onward. And when his disciples heard of it after John had been beheaded, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. Verse 20, I mean 30, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. They told him all things. Uh, Master, um, it's about your second cousin. He baptized you last month. Oh, yeah, how is John? Um, you tell him, Peter. No, you tell him. I'm always in trouble for my mouth. <laughs> oh, you tell him, John. I'm the youngest one. I'm an early teen. <laughs> how do you tell somebody? It's a gift to be able to tell somebody that they've lost someone they love so much. John is not with us anymore. What, 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 what? He was beheaded. A hurried funeral took place. You could see the family area up there. It's a few miles away. We could... And Jesus was shaken. And, and, and look at verse uh, 31. He said unto them, Come you yourselves apart unto a desert place, and rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure or even in so much as to eat. And they departed to go to a desert place by ship privately. So think about the scene. Jesus just lost his second cousin, the man who prepared the way, sent from God, not by God. The man whose evidence of calling was that he baptized him, Jesus prepared him 
for his calling to save humanity from itself. You leave us to ourselves, we'll kill each other. We need a savior. Just give us a year and we start looking at each other's color and where we're from. And we're... These are scary times. We need a savior. John prepared the way of the Lord and now he's been murdered. He did nothing wrong. Jesus had to grieve. Now, this is the moment when you see the humanity of our Jesus. He did not choose to, to, to use his divinity. He could have turned stones into pepperoni pizza, veggie pepperoni pizza, <laughs> but he didn't. He did not come to save himself. We are told that angels ministered to him and saved him. He chose not to use his divinity. And here you see his humanity. Jesus needs to grieve. So he tells the disciples, get in the boat. Where are you going, Master? I don't care. A desert place. I want to be far away from all. The, look, we're here at the gate of the city. Everybody's coming and going. I need to be alone. I'm the same way. When someone I love dies, I need to be alone. I remember when my brother was murdered in L.A., my brother Jerry, rest in peace, he was on his knees begging for his life, and they killed him anyway. His body was dumped behind a warehouse on the corner of Mission and Maine in East L.A., right there by County USC Medical Center. Homeless complained because the place where his body lay in that heat became uninhabitable. Ants and bugs took over the area. LAPD was called, and I have the reports. He was taken to a morgue, and although there were five witnesses, he was declared an accidental death. Case was closed and never investigated. But when we had to tell our mom that Jerry had died, it was one of the worst nights of our lives. I'm the kind that needs to be alone. I was so hurt. I was pastoring in Bakersfield, and I looked up into the heavens and said, I prayed to you every day. Just where were you? Where were you? I preach faithfully. I teach all this stuff about your presence. Just where were you? And I stayed away from church for four weeks. Church members didn't know their pastor was discouraged back at the house. Well, you know, he's grieving. He's probably with family. No, I was at the house swearing I'd never, never go back to church again. We all grieve different, huh? I'm a mess. I don't know how to grieve. And I'm married to a counselor. <laughs> that you got a problem when you're married to a counselor and you still can't get through your grief. And I made a decision to turn in my ministerial credentials, to resign from my, my ordination to the gospel, and to hand in my gloves. I cannot preach this truth if the truth can let me down that bad. I was driving up 99, and I rehearsed my speech. When I get to Clovis, mm -hmm. in a nice way, I'm going to hand over my stuff. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to move away from Bakersfield. I can't take this pain. I was telling my kids as we were driving up 99 yesterday, there it was, 2nd Avenue. Just a, my very first sermon I ever preached with this, was at the Selma Church in 1976. You didn't know that, huh? Alan White preached in that pulpit. You still have it. Give it to the white estate. What are you doing with it? You shouldn't have idols. Ooh, that's another message. But it, it, give it to the white estate. People would love to take pictures in front of it. Anyway, that's another. How did I divert into a message that has nothing to do with bananas? Anyway, uh, that's called a transition. I got a break from my grief here and get back to my message. So just so you know, it's called transitioning in your message when you bring it back to reality. I pulled over on 2nd Avenue there in Selma, and I went under the bridge with 99 going over me. And it was there 
that the full extent of the grief finally hit me. I just remember screaming and screaming under that bridge, crying out to heaven, and I couldn't hear anything. We're all born, and we all die. What is it about death that we don't know how to take? Birth, I mean, my first grandchild was born a month ago. We're pretty excited still. Why does birth cause the greatest joy and death causes the greatest misery? It's one of the stuff I can't wait to get over. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? I look forward to that. It's personal. Bunch of us are waiting on some graves to open up, right? This isn't a theological construct. This is a blessed hope. He better come. I'm waiting on some graves. Amen. Amen. Welcome to camp meeting where you could have your faith revived too. Now I'm, I'm laying my soul bare so you could see the preacher suffer as much as everybody else. And I remember just screaming and crying and carrying on. And that's when it hit me. The Lord did not take my brother. The enemy did. Why in the world do we blame God for everything the devil does to us? That is patently unfair. The devil does destruction, and we look into heaven and blame God. At that moment, God planted a merciful seed in my mind. I got back into my car, a little Toyota Crescent I put back together three times. Burned out two engines on that thing, one of them on our way to camp meeting in SoCal. Left it in Paso Robles, and after the meetings, I went and put another 7 MGE. As I, I'm a mechanic, you know, pastors, we can't afford anything, so we learn to do everything ourselves. <laughs> but that's another message. <laughs> you see, brothers and sisters, I got back to Bakersfield, and I, I went and talked to my friend, Pastor Joe Mallinson. He was associate pastor at the Central Church in Bakersfield at the time. I said, Joe, what am I going to do? And I'll never forget Joe's approach. He just hugged me. He held me in his arms. He didn't tell me it was a lack of faith to be so broken. He didn't give me a Bible study on the state of the dead because I can give a mean study myself. I know all the passages of Scripture that bring comfort. I did not need that. I just needed someone to hold me and tell me I was going to be all right. And he said words that changed my life. He says, Jose, we got to pray you through this. We got to pray you through this, buddy. And I praise God for Joe Melanson because God took my broken heart and began to mend it. Now, why am I telling you this simple story? Because Jesus was told that John was killed that night and he needed to be alone, he needed to grieve. And he told the boys, get into the boat. We're going to go to a desert place. I need to be alone today. But the people, look, they're leaving. People saw him go. <coughs> it's really something when you have no privacy. It's something. I've been at a Piggly Wiggly. Remember those stores used to exist here? You'll find them in Alabama. I was at a Piggly Wiggly in a little town in central Alabama. And I was out there buying strawberries from Watsonville. Thank you. <laughs> and someone said, you're Elder Rojas. If you get spotted at a Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> there's no place to hide. <laughs> and I'm just little me. What must it have been like when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the reason why the choir of heaven sings, when he walked the planet. <coughs> there he goes. They're on a boat. Bring the family. We'll follow them. And it says here, they followed along the shore as the boat sailed. Finally, Jesus gets to the desert place. That looks like a good spot. But the closer they got to shore, uh, Master, it looks like camp meeting. Must be 17,000 people there. 
scriptures are clear. It was 5,000 men plus women and children. One chronologist suggested, and for those of you who are uh, wondering what a chronologist is, in the, the discipline of theology, chronologists specialize only on the numbers of scripture. And, and um, we do a lot of chronology when we study prophecy, right? So that's chronology, when you apply numbers, when you try to decipher the meaning of numbers. And one chronologist said it was 5,000 plus men, women and children and elderly. It was more than likely over 20,000 people gathered. Jesus is trying to get away, to be alone, to grieve with the guys to talk about his second cousin, John, and, and, and everything that was coming in this ministry and how it's all been interrupted. Maybe Jesus thought that John would be his teammate and that they would go out and do stuff side by side, and, and now he's gone. He's gone. Who do I see about that? Master, that's a lot of people on shore. And the word of God says, Jesus saw the people and had compassion for them. I miss John. We'll talk about it after. Let's go to work. He gets off the boat. People start running toward him. My son is sick. What's the matter? He can't move. Mijo, mijo, get up. Mommy. Oh. He's walking for the first time in a year. Master, I can't see. Come. He touches his eyes and heals him. Another one is vexed by an evil spirit. And Jesus says, come out. You never had permission to be in there to begin with. Get out of here. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will never walk in darkness. You can't be with Jesus and the devil at the same time. It's either one or the other. You could turn off all the lights in this building, and it can go pitch dark, but with the smallest match, a little dancing flame, you can still see your hand in the darkest corner of this big building. See, light will always vanquish darkness. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I had, um, it's happened twice. I was holding meetings in the country where witch doctors are busy. You pay a lot of money, and their spells are believed in, and they happen. Well, I was supposed to die one night. I want to describe the spell. And I came from my meetings the next night, and two guys said, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> I said, get in line, my brother. <laughs> I don't know why folks think that when they see me, but I'll live as long as Jesus decides. You understand what I'm saying? Look at me when I'm talking to you. When the Lord decides, then we'll hang up these gloves. And uh, so we, we paid a lot of money, and it always works. You're supposed to die. Well, was that a, a spell yesterday? Oh, dude, you should have donated the money for ministry. Now you went and wasted it on darkness. <laughs> Who did it? Well, the, he is not here. I want to meet this guy. They brought him. I baptized the witch doctor. You don't mess with the Lord, man. <laughs> Casting spells. You walk in the light, the light is always greater than the darkness. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Which doctor got baptized first? Don't mess with Jesus. If you think you can play around with that stuff, stop it. In the name of the Lord, for he has plans for your life. There's greater power than the darkness, and it's called the light. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That's why you've come to camp meeting. Recharge your batteries that the light may be bright in your heart again. Enough with the darkness. Some are still grieving here tonight. Some of you are grieving the death of your faith. Some of you are grieving because of your doubts. You've given in to doubt. My Washington Redskins have never won the Super Bowl since I forget when, the Stone Age. But we don't give up hope. There's always next season. Next season, we won't be in last place. We'll be in second to last. Things will get better. See, you never stop believing when you got hope. And if we can do that in something as silly as American football, imagine in Jesus Christ. Don't. Lose hope. I'm going to be speaking on that tomorrow morning, so that was the commercial for 
You going to get up tomorrow with me? Yeah. All right. See you in the morning. Anyway, long story short, Jesus spent hours healing folks. With 20,000 people, there was a lot of medical ministry work to do. The right arm of the work was at, is very active. Then he began to teach. Then he began to preach. You know, there's a difference between teaching and preaching. How many here are teachers? All right. What, what do you do when you teach? You convey information. And your students pick it up at percentages. And you want to increase your percentage of access to the minds of your students. And it's reflected in the exams, in the tests, and the quizzes that you administer. And you see that your kids are coming along. That means that your teaching capacity is increasing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That's different than preaching. Preaching is meant to inspire, to call you to action, to help you make a decision. So Jesus was teaching the messianic prophecies. Then he broke into preaching which would always end with, so deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. In Hebrew, lech acharai. Can you say that? Lech, no, no it's not H, lech. No, you got to throw a little phlegm in there. Lech acharai. No, not too bad. Some of you are fighting the bronchitis, I can tell. <laughs> There's always a DM or a C. Anyway, there are different cough syrups that are helpful. In. Lech acharai. Come. Lech acharai. Follow me. So deny yourself. You have a lot of opinions. Well, I don't think that. Well, I don't see what's wrong. Well, I don't know why the Bible. I, 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 yai, yai, yai. There are people with eye problems <laughs> that are severe. Who's asking you about your opinion? Set your doubts aside. Take up your cross. And lech, come, acharai, follow me. See, that's what preaching is for, to inspire and to call to a decision. Tomorrow morning, mid-morning, and afternoon, it's a combination of teaching and preaching. I've been asked to teach as well, so I... I will comply with the request. <laughs> but Friday night, the gloves come off again. Any questions? <laughs> Bring your friends. We'll take a beating together. Jesus taught, preached, after healing countless numbers of people, and then toward the end of the day, the, we're told here in, in Mark, as the day was well spent, they're at least 11 to 12 miles from town. It has been hot. Folks are tired. The elderly are famished. Children are in trouble. Dehydration is broken out. It, every time we've had a camporee, we got kids passing out. We, we, we have teams with buckets of water, bottles of water. Water galore because kids get dehydrated during camporee. Remember when you went? Yeah, I'm not a kid anymore, but I passed out too at Red Rock in Colorado, or at Oshkosh. And um, I, it, it really is a place for those of you, Oshkosh, Gesundheit. No, 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 it really is a place. Long story short, Jesus looks at all the people, they gotta eat. Uh, master, 200 denarii's worth of bread, $5,000 worth of bread, will not give everybody even a little piece. Now, you know that the bread in the Middle East, especially at the time of Christ, was round, thick. We call it pita bread today. So let's admit it. It was a tortilla. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. It wasn't a loaf. So we're talking about the falafel really being a burrito. Amen? <laughs> Okay, so they didn't have jalapenos. It wasn't a perfect world. <laughs> so you could just see the Lord tearing on his tortilla, and that's how we do. We tear, grab, eat. You could try it at home. Tear, grab, eat. Some of you didn't eat supper. You're just looking at me. <laughs> that's not right. He's eating in front of us. 
There was not enough. So we now have a humanitarian crisis. And it was one of the disciples said, well, there's a kid here with a lunch pail. And Jesus went to him, what do you got, son? I got five tortillas and two veggie fish. <laughs> Can I borrow them? My mommy made them for me. Yeah, yeah, I know, but can I borrow them? My mommy made them for me. <laughs> Sweetheart, I promise I'll give them back. My mommy made them for me. It was just enough for a child to eat. But when Jesus promises to give it back, trust him. Jesus Okay, but remember, <laughs> my mommy made it for me. Just wanted to say that. Jesus blessed the food. Do you bless the food at your house? Or do you just do it because you're supposed to? Have you ever been halfway through the... Oops. <laughs> we forgot to pray. Joanne, you pray. I already prayed yesterday. How come you never asked him? I'm not going to pray. And then this big fight breaks out at the table. Somebody pray so we can eat. <laughs> I see elbowing going on. Are you listening? I'm glad you came to camp meeting. This should resolve it. You see, we don't pray so we can eat legally. We pray for God to bless the food. He really does. I mean, really. I have some people here I've prayed with over meals. Lord, the food looks incredible. You're something else. Thank you. We know there's people hungry within a one-mile radius of this place. Provide for them because you really have provided for us. Thank you for blessing this food. I'm sitting there. Amen. You're welcome. Excuse me. I'm going to grab. You see, a teenager taught me to pray like that. Lord, you're like, awesome. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he blessed the food. I remember my seven-year-old daughter. She's 30 now. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the food that came into our house. I know it's going to be a blessing. We were still bringing it in. <laughs> it was snowing outside, and we're sitting there waiting for her to bless the food on the floor before we can get it into the kitchen. Thank you, thank you, th thank you for bringing the food into our house. My child was teaching me how to bless the food. Jesus blessed the food. He immediately grabbed all five tortillas and both veggie fish, you know, uh, Morning Star Farms, <laughs> stamped right on them. And, and all right. Bring some baskets. Master, you grabbed everything. Please grab. Look at there's still tortillas and veggie fish. Grab. There's still some more. Grab. Ponte agarrar, no te pongas a platicar tanto. Grab. <laughs> Before you know, because Jesus was from the neighborhood, you know, they talked different in Nazareth. And they were all citizens. Come on now. Mm. <laughs> and so then, all of a sudden, Everybody's grabbing. Bring more baskets. They're filling stuff up. Jesus said, have them sit by 50s and 100s. These guys are lugging half-ton bushels. Take all you want. No, I, I hate to take. No, no, no. You're not going to take from anyone. Agarra todo lo que puedas, por favor, porque aquí va a sobrar. Know that we have no green salsa, but grab. <laughs> grab. And everybody's, I know. It's good. I like the tortilla, especially because... Like they microwaved it first or something happened. <laughs> and everybody's eating, eating, and after that they ate. And they kept coming up with baskets, and Jesus keeps grabbing, and they keep filling. You see, when Jesus blesses the food, he really does. He really blesses the food. Well, I, after a while... Guys could take, all, take home whatever you have left over. Jesus goes back to the kid. My mommy made it for Remember him? Okay, mijo. Here's your stuff. I'm not hungry. <laughs> My mommy made it for you. <laughs> 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 
the kid had already eaten five basket loads equivalents. <laughs> By giving his one, he had more than enough for himself. When you give, there's more blessing than you can imagine for yourself. Freely you receive. Freely give. Don't worry about it. You give the last that you have. Watch what the Lord's going to do. And so now everybody ate. People have been healed today. People have been taught today. People have been inspired and called to decision today. People have now been fed the most delicious meal. Now they're grabbing fresh water from the lake. I think we're ready for the hike home. And then Jesus turns to his disciples and says, why don't you guys go out onto the lake? I'll catch up to you. Master, there's only one boat. Did I ask about the number of boats on shore? Just go get in the boat. I'll catch up to you guys later. I know. I, I told him, but como que he's not listening. <laughs> you know, I wish Jesus would just do things the way we think it should be done. I mean, our committee really studied this. The church manual is clear in page 211, subsection 3. Why does Jesus do this to us when we have clear policy? I mean, Alan White even talks about it in his IR of Ages. Why does Jesus seem to want to be doing things his way? We may not understand Jesus' way. Just trust him and do it. So, uh, I know he's not listening. Get in the boat. I'm not going to say it again. I'll catch up to you guys. I know, I know. Okay, all right, okay. No se enoje. All right. I know, I know. He's not listening. He's in one of those moods again. And they push offshore. And Jesus said, you guys better hurry. Those waters look choppy out there. Any sailors here? Amen. Thank you for your service. Coast Guard, thank you for your service. What was it like on choppy waters? Just don't let the waters hit the boat sideways. Unless you just ate. Anyway. The power, the power of the water, only a few understand it. And those who have served in our armed forces, in the Navy, uh, in the, yeah, hoorah, thank you, Jesus, for those who keep us safe and defend liberty. United States Marines, Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, National Guard, and reserves in between all. When I used to attend briefings at the Pentagon at the Secretary of Defense's office, they hated saluting my mustache. <laughs> I'm totally out of regulation. Welcome to the Pentagon, sir. Please follow me. Just completely wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. And I would do nothing to trim my mustache down to regulation. You see, that's the irony of the military, brothers and sisters. We don't all look alike. We don't think alike. But we serve alike. Our nation and its security. I've been there as Marines are deploying, as Navy SEALs are deploying. I hear the commander barking stuff, gear up, we're going in. The enemy's dug in, they're cocky, they think they have the upper hand. And then, then I hear a, 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 the, the Marine the commander saying, set aside your doubts. Some of you don't even like each other. But tonight, we're all United States Marines. Tonight, we're all Americans. And tonight, if we don't have each other's back, we're all going to die out there together. I don't know about you, but I want to come home. Yes, sir. Gear up. And I was there three hours later when they returned from their mission. Not one man was lost. A lot happens when we come together. Jesus prayed about it in John 17. Lord, I, I pray that they be one, that they be united like you and I are. We must come together, brothers and sisters. Jesus is coming soon. We must come together. Well, these guys take off, but before Jesus can do remember he's trying to grieve? Hello? His cousin died last night? He's trying to be alone finally? And the priest came up to him. Excuse us, we needed to talk with you. Uh, my cousin, wait, wait, before you say anything, show us a sign. What? Show us a sign that we may believe you are Mashiach, the Messiah. You guys have been here all day? Yes. You've seen people healed. 
You've heard incredible reviews of the Messianic pro pro prophecies. You have seen appeals led by something you can't comprehend that John the Baptist had. You, you, you just saw thousands of people eat from one kid's lunch pail. And we need to see a sign to prove that you are the one. That's when Jesus had to develop the concept that there are people who see, but they don't see. There are people hearing who just don't hear. I can see miracles happen. I remember one time we had a, 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 a summit on the mountains and nine, over 9,000 people were baptized that day. Injuries broke out among the pastors who are not used to baptizing hundreds of people in a single day as muscles began to slip off of shoulders. I mean, we're in shape, but round is a shape, right? It's not... <laughs> anyway, so... Not all pastors are chiseled and beautiful. We're just a bunch of guys uh, into other endeavors. Need I go any further and shame myself and my wife any further than I have? Brothers and sisters... After over 9,000 souls, someone still came to tell me off. You guys do not preach properly. Really? That's right. Did you see the baptisms? Forget about that. You just don't preach properly. How many people have you brought to Jesus? None. But I know what proper preaching should be. I told her, sit down. I'll be praying for you. Some people seeing do not see. Some people hearing do not hear. There are some folks that even tonight, you might be distracted by my appearance or by my use of Spanish or by my not having a tie on or something. Get over it. We're a bunch of broken human beings. You see, there's something bigger than us. There's something greater than us. There's something more powerful than us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Show us a sign. Jesus said, this adulterous generation, you will not be given a sign except the sign of Jonah. What's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you people? The sign of Jonah. And they all knew the sign of Jonah. What was the sign of Jonah? Repent. Destruction's coming to the city. Repent. And what did, Jonah, what did Nineveh do? They repented. they repented. So what's he saying to them? The sign of Jonah means you have a shot at this. Repent. Be saved with the rest of us. Jesus wasn't condemning even of that kind of blindness, that kind of foolishness. He still said, I'm not going to show you a sign. He could easily make fire come down from heaven and prove to these guys. He didn't come to save himself. He came to save them. And in their doubts, he eyeballed them and said, I will not give you that sign except the sign of Jonah. He's back to his cousin's message, John the Baptist. Repent. Repent. And be saved. My brothers and my sisters, we've come to camp meeting. Some of you came here thinking you just come for your relaxation. Some of you came here to get those deals on veggie meat down at the case lots. <laughs> I know that. We're going to get a good deal, especially on Friday. <laughs> Some of you came to get the good deals on books and Bibles and stuff. Some of you came to see old friends and vacation out here in the meadows and chase a gopher before 11 a.m. I know, I've watched some of you. What are you doing? We're chasing a gopher. It's a lot of fun. Back at the house, they just destroy the lawn, but here you can actually chase a California golden gopher. <laughs> Let me tell you why you came to camp meeting. Look at me. You came to camp meeting because it's time to be blessed. Yeah. It's time to get back on your feet spiritually. Yeah. It's time to set aside your doubts. Some of you are hurt and angry. Look at me. The church has hurt some of you. And on behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, please forgive us for having hurt you. Forgive us for having broken your heart and disappointed you. Some of you were disfellowshipped. We're so sorry for breaking your heart. But it's time to come home. 
place has not been the same without you. Come back. Por favor, ya regresa al redil. Nos has faltado muchísimo. We need you. I told my kids something one day. Either we all go or I ain't going. Oh, Dad. No, no, look at me. <laughs> Either we all go or I'm not going. You can't tell me it's heaven if one of my kids are missing. Those are our kids out there. Those are our kids questioning faith and religion. Those are our kids out there in the world. The last thing they need is for us to judge them. They need to be loved. You've come to camp meeting to charge up some batteries, get your kids back. That's your nieces and nephews out there. That's your grandchildren out there. You may not like their music, but they are your blood. We must work for the salvation of our kids because they're at camp meeting too. Some of our people are lost in addiction and drugs. There is help. You can get help. There's counseling going on over here on this side of the auditorium. You can get connected to a rehab, a detox center. It's time to get back on your feet. I was driving through Arizona a couple years ago with my family. We were out in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure there was a sign somewhere that said, nowhere. Because <laughs> it was at least 80 or 100 miles in all directions. Even lizards were like, what are you doing out here, man? <laughs> it was 114. It felt like Fresno. <laughs> but much drier. And there's a little tiny mom and pop gas station there. I walk in and I, I look at all these knives. They're so cheap, but they look beautiful. I, I, you know, I, I'm a buck knife man myself. Anyway, that's another message. And so anyway, um, <clears throat> I even have my stuff engraved. I'm sure you care and you're fighting tears over the concept. I'm looking at knives when somebody walks up, Elder Rojas? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> are you Elder Rojas? Guilty. <laughs> That's another life. And he says, you remember me? I'm so-and-so from Hanford. I was strung out on heroin, and you believed in me. You got me into a detox center, and I hated your guts. Remember I told you? Yeah, I remember. You almost hit me. <laughs> but you helped me detox. I got off of heroin faster. I'm clean. I'm clean. Amen. And I got Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I had to come out here where there's nothing. There are no drug dealers out here, only lizards. He has since moved over to New Mexico, and those folks have embraced him. He says, I'm clean. You see, that's why we do what we do. For one soul, it was worth it all. Some of you are strung out on stuff that you can't figure out. You can't kick this yourself, but you can get help. That's why you came to camp meeting. Some of you are watching on television or on Lion Street. The Lord is calling out to you. The Lord has plans. I get excited because I have hope. Do you have hope? Amen. I have nothing left to lose. You want my job? I don't have one. <laughs> the Lord called me to launch a self-supporting ministry. So I'm not up for re-election anywhere at a nominating committee. You can get mad all you want. Worst you can do is just don't invite me back. And that's all right with me. But make no mistake, we came to camp meeting because the Lord called us here. Yeah. My wife, my kids, and I are not on vacation here. We came to work for Jesus. Yeah. Keep your head up high. Lay your doubts aside. The Lord has a plan for your life. That may sound hollow, especially if you've been through terrible experiences. But like Joe Mellinson once told me, Pastor, we got to pray you through this. The Lord's going to pray you through some stuff this very week. We got prayer teams circulating, a prayer tent going 24-7. You have come to the right place. Welcome to camp meeting. And remember, the veggie chicken with tartar sauce is incredible for those of you who have a burden. I want to sing this song, but I want you to think about this message for yourself. Lord... 
because when you hear a decent message, you're always thinking, I hope she's listening back there. Oh, I hope he's listening. He needs, forget about them. This was for you. This was for you. We need to awaken, ladies and gentlemen. A great awakening must now happen. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Out in the world, in darkness I walked. Jesus, a Savior, I met. Oh, what compassion and love he did show. He met the needs of my heart. Shadows dispelling, with joy I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down. Day, day I will never forget. Out in the world, in darkness I walk. Jesus, a Savior, I met. Oh, what compassion and love He did show. He met the needs of my heart. Shadows dispelling, with joy I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came He brought you to camp meeting. Like we say on the street, what you gonna do by it? You wanna step outside? I'll pray with you. I got cousins. Well, I'll pray for you. Welcome to camp meeting. I'd like to say to planners and the leadership of this conference, I am honored to be your servant this week. And I ask God to grant me the miracle of fulfilling my assignments. Please, 
you didn't just come to vacation here. Look into the face of God. There's something for everyone. Some of you will be able to take that class in prophecy you've been dying to take. Others of you are going to get help for your marriage while you're here. Others are you going to find new hope when you've had such hopeless journeying. Welcome to camp meeting. This is opening night. The bolts only get tighter with each program. So consider yourself fortunate with a light message tonight. Jesus, on the day his cousin John died, began his ministry in earnest. John fulfilled his task, then died that Jesus might fulfill his task and then die for us. I'm inspired by the strength of Jesus. Let that strength be yours as well. Pido a Dios que derrame sobre ti una bendición especial. Que el Espíritu Santo caiga sobre ti durante este campestre también. That's how my mom would say it. To our Jewish brothers and sisters, El Elohim Chad Yisrael Baruch Hashem Adonai. Baruch Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach. And to our French brothers and sisters, Je me suis senti un orech de tabek vous. May the Lord perform a miracle. May you see the face of God. Why don't we stand together and pray? Did you survive okay? I'm still not going to shave, you know that. Look at me. Let's go into his presence. Ready? Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we are your sons and daughters. Look upon us and have mercy upon us. Some of us are broken, don't have any strength of our own left, and we manage to make it to camp meeting. Some of us are devastated that our kids are gone. They haven't looked heavenward in a long time. That is not acceptable. We cry out to you, save our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews. The devil cannot have our kids. They are ours, Lord. We insist upon heaven. Lord, some of us are confused. We've been through things, and we harbor many and deep, long-standing doubts. Reach across the abyss and touch our broken hearts. During this camp meeting, restore us into your arms, into your presence. So now as we leave, Lord, may we talk about everything we've seen here tonight. Give us a good night's rest. Bring us in. Tomorrow the gloves come off, Lord, as you tighten the bolts of camp meeting. With your blessing, we will go in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. don't say anything. Look at me just one more time. Don't, don't talk to you. This. Go. Tell someone what you have seen. Tell someone what you have seen. Go in peace. We would like to thank the constituency of the Central California Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for making this program possible and from viewers just like you. Thank you.